Hi, welcome to ECNM Ask. This is a series of short videos, a new series of just short videos where the subject matter experts at ECNM answer your questions. If you have questions, we want to get them answered for you. Um, I'm Randy Barnett, and I will be the answering the questions today on grounding and bonding. My background is, well, I'm one of the subject matter experts here at ECM. I'm also a program manager for electrical codes and safety at uh, NTT training. And my background is I'm an electrician. So today we're going to talk about grounding and bonding and see if we can get just a few quick questions answered on that. So let's get going. Um, the first question is any thoughts on corner grounded, or excuse me, corner grounded Delta transformers, corner grounded Delta transformers. Yeah, they're great. Huh? Okay. So what we're talking about is on a transformer, a Delta connected transformer, um, I have my three windings, A, B, and C phase. And what I can do is I can come off of one of those corners on it's usually on B phase and go ahead and connect it to the earth and ground. And that's called a corner grounded delta. So um, any thoughts on it? We're allowed to do that. And why would we do that? Well, if I have a delta connected transformer and it's not grounded, I'm gonna have to install a, uh, some uh, ground lights and you know, ground fault lights, uh, ground detection system, I should call it, so that I can monitor that transformer and make sure I don't get any ground faults in that system. Because if you think about it, if I've got a Delta connected transformer and it's ungrounded and I get a ground fault out here in a piece of equipment, how's the current going to get back into the transformer to trip the overcurrent protective device if there's no ground connection on the transformer, the current can't get back in. So by grounding a corner, I allow the overcurrent protective device to operate then and trip in a ground fault situation. So that makes life a lot easier for me. If I'm using an ungrounded transformer, it has to be typically supervised industrial installation requirements for the ground detector system so I can get away from that. Now, the next question, it says, uh, we're design consultants required to ground the utility transformer. Typically the utility transformer is responsible for that grounding. Well, yeah, they are. No, you're not gonna mess with that transformer. Maybe an easy way to think of it is, uh, think of a, a service drop into a, a dwelling unit. So I have a transformer mounted up on a pole and then the, the utility owns that transformer and they own all of those conductors that come down until I get to that service point. In other words, where the utility ties into the conductors coming out of my service head. That service point begins my premises wiring system. And that's where my, that becomes my wiring now. So where am I gonna ground? Well, I'm gonna go on into my building and I'm gonna ground at that service point in my building, either at the meter or the main break or whatever I'm doing there. And um, so, yeah, you're not gonna to, to, to ground the utility transformer, it belongs to the utility. Uh, and they, they're just gonna ground it probably on the primary side, right? Bonding for lightning protection systems. Well, first of all, the lightning protection system is a separate system. There's a couple of references to it. Let's take a quick look at uh, and not very much information in the code. Let's go to 250.106 real quick and see what it has to say about lightning protection systems. So I'm in the 2020 code book. We're waiting for the 2023 to come out, but 250.106 then, it says the lightning protection system ground terminals, excuse me, the lightning protection system ground terminals shall be bonded to the building structure grounding electrode system. So I can go ahead and I can connect my, I, I have to, I have to bond together my strike termination devices, which are covered in another section in the code, but I have to bond these strike termination devices where they go down into the earth. I have to connect those grounding electrodes to my grounding electrode system for my building. Now, elsewhere in the code, it's gonna tell you with, well, hey, if I got a lightning protection system, why do I need a grounding electrode system? I'll just bond to that and use that. No, you can't do that. That's forbidden by the code then. Also very important, there's a reference to NFPA 780 in the informational note at 106 and that is for lightning protection systems. So you definitely need to refer to that. Um, another question, uh, so we get one more in here. We've got, can an enclosure be considered as grounded if supported by steel that is grounded to a connected piece of steel? So I had to think this one out a little bit. What are we talking about? So maybe we've got a, a piece of equipment, a disconnect 
panel, whatever it is, control panel. And you probably mounted that to some unistrut and that's connected to the building steel, which of course is all bonded together back to the source. And eventually at the source is connected to the earth and ground. So the question is why not just use all that building steel and unistrut and everything else is the equipment grounding conductor is what you're saying. And, and the answer is, well, I don't know, let's see. What does it say about the equipment grounding conductor? Let's go to 250. Uh, where is it? 250.119 and take a quick look at what we can use as the equipment grounding conductor then. And so 250.119 lists about what is it? 14 different items here that we can use as the equipment grounding conductors. Oh, I see things like uh, copper aluminum wires, rigid metal conduit, intermediate electrical metallic tubing and uh, liquid tight and so on and so forth. But nowhere in here type MC cable, MI cable, surface metal raceways listed for grounding. But I don't see anything in here that says I'm allowed to use the unistrut to build the frame of the building or anything like that as my equipment grounding conductor, even though we're gonna bond all of this equipment together then. So in answer to the question, no, you've got to go ahead and either use your, probably your conduit, or you're going to just pull in a, a separate wire type equipment grounding conductor. Well, anyway, that is all the time. We've got uh, questions for today. We've got to keep this short and sweet. So uh, once again, thanks for attending this short Q&A question uh, period uh, on ECNM uh, through ECNM Magazine, part of the Endeavor Business Portfolio Publications. And we'll talk to you next time.